hi everyone so this is another video where i'm going to teach you laptop motherboard components and of course their functions so as you know to be a good technician and to maintain laptop motherboard repairing you should first know about the components the laptop motherboard components how to test it what is the difference between components etc so let's get started so let's begin from the beginning so first let's take a look to motherboard parts so as you know there is basically about six mandatory parts in every motherboard the cpu circuit as you can see here we have the cpu circuit the north bridge circuit here basically we have the north bridge always you will find the north bridge near to the cpu socket as you can see and then the graphic card over here we have the graphic card sometimes in some laptops or computers you will find as you can see the graphic card is integrated with the north bridge okay and the switch bridge as you can see here or the ich over here we have the switch bridge okay or the ich basically this ich is it controls all motherboard ports and connectors okay and then of course near to the ich you will find the super io here we have the super io the cmos battery and of course the bios near to this ich and of course we have the cmos battery as i told you before so basically we have this circuit we have this circuit this one also the ich circuit and of course plus the power circuit like the charge ic circuit the 3 volt 5 volt circuit the cpu circuit etc okay so here for example in this picture as you can see we have this kind of component this is basically inductors okay this one also is inductors we have here inductors so you will find inductors in every circuit in the motherboard so the inductor basically is always exist in the power rail as we have seen in the previous curves so always the inductor is connected to a high path or where we have the power okay so the inductor basically is used to increase the current in the circuit okay and of course we use these inductors or coils in order to 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 detect the short circuit okay and of course here we have one of the most important component in every motherboard you will find it everywhere in the motherboard this is basically the ceramic capacitor we call it sometimes pif capacitor or picofarad capacitors okay as you can see here okay so basically these capacitors are not polarized it's not polarized capacitor okay means they don't have plus and minus okay so basically to test or to check these capacitors using the multimeter you should always put the multimeter to buzzer option and you should never find this capacitor shorted if you find any shorter capacitor means you have a short circuit and over here this is also capacitors <coughs> but different capacitors so here we have ceramic capacitors do you see the reference c this is electrolytic capacitor as you can see okay the, those capacitors are polarized means we have here plus minus plus and minus okay the color here refer to minus or the negative parts and of course in every capacitor you will find its capacity as you can see for example for this one you have 220 microfarad 6.3 volts okay this one 100 microfarad 10 volts okay <coughs> 
and of course here we have other type of capacitors of course for this kind of capacitors or of course we find it also in in every circuit in the motherboard its purpose is to clarify or to make the current a pure current okay so this is basically capacitors used in terms or in purpose of filtering for filtering purposes we have here also those capacitors we called it tantalum capacitor also those capacitors are polarized as you can see we have here plus and minus exactly like this one plus and minus so all this component we called it smt components or surface mount device and of course the opposite of smt components are tht component or true hole technology component okay so here we have 10 talent capacitors over here also we have 10 talent capacitors of course those component also or capacitors are of course used also for filtering purposes okay then as you can see here we have a resistors of course any technician anyone know about resistors it limits the current okay here we have some resistors here we have other resistors this is basically uh, we called it for example we called it a zero resistor it's like a fuse okay here we have another kind of resistor this is basically current sense resistor a current sense resistor if you check it using the multimeter you will hear a buzzer its value is very low okay and of course here we have diodes this is basically zener diode okay zener diode so this diode basically is used to stabilize the current in the circuit okay so it it has basically the cathode and the anode cathode and anode okay or negative terminal and positive terminal so here this line uh, this line here refer to the cathode okay so of course to check it or to test it using the multimeter you should always put the black probe of the multimeter here in this side in the cathode where we have this line or here and the positive terminal here okay and you should get a reading about 700 drop voltage or 400 drop voltage okay and if you swap the props of the multimeter you should not get anything in the multimeter and if you get a short circuit or a buzzer or i mean if you get a buzzer or a very low low reading means the diode is shorted bad you should change it with another one okay here basically we have a picture from motherboard where we have crystal as you can see this is basically crystal oscillator here we have crystal oscillator next to this ic this ic we called it this ic we called it clock generator ic the clock generator ic has as a purpose to give the the clock or the timing for the whole motherboard and of course as you know without the clock the motherboard cannot work properly no synchronization okay so the clock generator is the ic that is responsible for timing and clock in the motherboard and of course you will find always the crystal oscillator near to clock generator also near to ic head here basically we have other types of clock generator as you can see here we have its value for this one for example we have 25000 megahertz so thank you guys that's it for this course this is a brief video and of course please don't forget to subscribe and share the video and if you find the video a very interesting video please don't forget to like the video and of course for anyone who want to read more articles you will find my website in the disc in the description box and of course as i told you before uh, for anyone who want to join me in the patreon page you are very welcome in my patreon page you will find 
very unique content you will find laptop schematics i upload in a daily basis laptop schematics thank you very much and see you tomorrow with a new video thank you very much